Welcome everyone. My name is Samuel Mitchell and this is the Rump Shop where you pour sippy talk some things. But it's not just about that, it's about me um, educating myself as it relates to wine and whiskey and investing in those areas, areas and so forth. And most importantly, I figure I started a channel, like I said before, to share with others as I learn along the way. And with that, I have here today my not only my friend, my my boss at one time, she's a lovely boss. <laughs> You're supposed but, to say that. <laughs> but someone who I've learned so much from. So much, so much. And your name is? My name is Missy Monko. Yes. Samuel and I worked together, um, gosh, five years ago? Was that when we started working together? Five, about, see, about five four? I think five, four or five years. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah, we worked we worked together, and um, I was the wine director at that job, so I got to share my knowledge, and you know, Sam got to drink. Of course. Poor thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not crying. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, while we're here, we we figured, you know, why not talk about some wine, right? Definitely. Why not? Indeed. <laughs> mm -hmm. Perfect. And so um, I'm hoping to basically uh, ask some questions about Wine 101, but, but more so, ask you to share with me and the viewers who are watching this video, what have you what have you learned along the way? I mean, I know it, the industry is big. There's so much to learn, of course, without technology and so forth. Things are changing constantly, you know, but I'm hoping to get with you some of your information that things that you've learned and what have you seen um, change over the years since you've been in the industry. So, um, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, I mean, honestly, um, I, I this is actually something that I want to ask you because I don't know if I've ever asked you this uh -oh. before. Um, so, I first got interested in wine, not uh -huh. just as like, you know, I'm out at a college party and they've got wine and I say, sure, yeah, that looks like it's got, you know, like a whole fruit basket in it. I'll, I'll drink that and it's super sweet, rot your teeth kind of kind of yeah. wine. There's a place for that. I admit I don't <laughs> drink much of that anymore. But um, the moment when I really realized what wine was capable of was the first time that I paired wine and food at mm. one of my restaurant jobs uh, when I was in grad school. And it was like this light bulb went off and I was like, Oh my gosh, this is this completely changes the profile of the wine and the profile of the food. What have I been missing? So like I think that was the moment where I really started to get on board and realize like what potential wine had and how how interesting it was and how much I wanted it to be involved with it. So yeah. my question to you, Sam, is when was your like aha wine moment? My aha wine wine moment was you me surprised with my wife. She's the one who actually um, introduced me to wine and so forth. And I think it started off with either we were having sushi, um, you know, talking about sake and so forth and so forth. But after that, I think it was with, um, we went to dinner and we went and we had um, at a Thai restaurant, an amazing Thai restaurant out in Virginia. But the, uh, it was like in between those and then like, you know, she would take me to dinner and so forth and we get wine and then that's when it really got serious that hey like okay my wife loves wine and she's showing me she's teaching me all about wine and after she introduced me to wine i just took it off all of a sudden you know i went to look for a job that that that, <laughs> that deals with wine where i met you and i started becoming uh, a collector of wine and not to go off topic but it's that's how i started off and after a while, I started like love wine. I love love to learn about it, and you know, especially like you said before, with with, with having wine with food, it just changes everything. You know, from bubbly to white or red, the different levels of red to play with. You know, and I just love having it there and start collecting. But yeah, that's what, that, that's how it started. That's awesome. <laughs> good. Giving the wife credit, you you know what's up. <laughs> that's a good husband. But I right swear there. it's true. I swear it's true. <laughs> She'll, you'll say it even if she's not in the room, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because before, I mean, I was a beer kind of guy. I love um, stouts. I still love stouts. And then now, um, since I've um, elevated my palate in beers and so forth, I now love stouts that are aged in um, aged in bourbon barrels. 
So yeah, so like wow, oh, like, so like the bruisey kind. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I know what that means. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I mean, with that being said, if you ask me what kind of wines do I like, obviously it will be the wine that's kind of on the heavier side. So the re heavier red wines are, are the ones I enjoy the most, um, especially the ones that you can drink uh, without having food. You know, like your your, your Merlot and the, and those um, medium body wines. Um, but I catch me on a good or bad day, I would pair a light food with a red wine, okay? Yeah, why not, right? <laughs> Have fun with it, you know? <laughs> yes, yes. And I think that's one of the things that, you know, I'll definitely want to highlight is that, like, you know, and this is kind of like the, the first um, thing that I want to touch on is the fact that, like, you know, some people will be like, you know, I, I, I don't feel like I necessarily have you know a lot of wine knowledge should i really try like is this something that i really have business getting into and like learning more about yeah absolutely right. and right. you are allowed to like whatever wine you want mm -hmm. and on top of that when we're talking about wine with food a wine that you may not want to drink on its own will be like the perfect pairing for dinner that night and you'll be just like well this just like blew my mind this is this is totally different this is a like totally different experience I'm so glad I tried this. So yeah, I, that, that's that's a big thing. I'd say that's one of the biggest takeaways. Drink what you like. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And you know, um, the key thing that you said right there, you said um, exper uh, experience. I think what I've learned and what I've learned from you especially is that you, besides a common thing or a common knowledge, you would never know something unless you try it. But if you, ex if you try to, um, experience a different kind of wine if you know if you may not like it or not drink from that you 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 never know about you never heard try it out and maybe try with food and then see what happens see if you like hmm, okay I, I i i can get used to this or i can try this again sometime or hmm, this actually goes good together or nah yeah <laughs> but yeah. the point is you will never know unless you try you never know unless you try to develop your palate develop your develop, develop your, your senses and explore you know, especially when you're by yourself. To me, that's the best time to do it. So yeah, because you, you have you to wanna... drink the whole bottle. <laughs> it happens a lot. <laughs> this wasn't so bad after all. <laughs> Just kidding. Drink responsibly, everyone. Drink responsibly. Right? Right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, but yeah, um, I think... I think a lot of people, you know, in terms of like, you know, the wine one-on-one, getting into wine, I think a lot of people I'm assuming they don't know much about wine because for some maybe they had a bad experience with a with a bottle of wine maybe whether it's a cheap bottle or expensive bottle that doesn't taste good that first experience basically turned them off completely away from wine and for that fact they're just like wine mm -hmm. no good yeah you know mm -hmm. absolutely what do, you, what do you think is there anything different to your end when people not really drinking wine or yeah, right yeah, absolutely. Um, I think that it's a combination of things. Like one, I, you know, I, I worked at a, a winery recently and um, uh, this couple tried through a, a flight and then, you know, the gentleman wasn't really enjoying anything. He was very polite about it. He was like, I don't really like this one. I was like, okay, that's all right. Let's try the next one. And we went through almost the whole flight and I was like, have we found a winner yet? And he's like, you know, I just don't think I like wine. <laughs> and I was like, wow, that's okay. You know what? You tried it. Right. And, you know, again, that was only five wines. There's thousands and thousands of grape varieties in the world. So, I mean, and those grape varieties can be turned into millions of wines. So, I mean, if you don't like a few, that doesn't mean that you don't like any of them. Right. Um, and also, you know, when I first started, um, drinking wine. I, I like sweeter wines. I loved Gewürztraminer, which Ooh. I understand if you've never heard of it, it's like, that's a, it's a what a, a <laughs> <laughs> but that, was the, that was the first wine that like, I just, I don't know, I just, I don't know how on earth I managed to fall in love with the Gewürztraminer first. Um, but it's, um, it is often made in a sweeter style. And, um, you know, I started with sweeter wines 
And then I eventually moved towards drier wines. But I, I do still drink some sweet wines. I love dessert wines, you know, like mm. harvest stuff, ports, any oh, yeah. or all of the above. Samuel knows how much I love dessert wines because I'm always like, everyone drink them. They're so <laughs> underappreciated. <laughs> A few bottles up upstairs story somewhere. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. So um, yeah. But yeah, you know, you you may have had yeah, you may not have liked that one bottle. You may have been given a really expensive bottle, and you know, you try it and you're like, oh, uh, I guess I don't know. I don't get the big deal. That's okay. Right. Just and also keep in mind, just because it's expensive doesn't mean that everybody has to like it. Right. You know? Very Even important. One, one of the things that I've learned is that I can easily take as much joy in a $10 bottle of wine than I can in a $50 bottle, you know? Yeah. So it's, it's you know, and not to mention time, place, you know, um, when you're drinking, all that. There's so many things. So don't let that taint your view of right. what wine is because wine is such a broad world and there's so much to try. And yeah, you know, we're talking about experience. That is huge, absolutely huge. And uh, I'll definitely want to touch more on, on experience and tasting later. <laughs> Got you. So in a nutshell, mm -hmm. when it comes to wine 101, to, like getting someone to try it, like how do you, would, how do you recommend someone to, um, to give them that, that outer will per se to, to try wine, like, uh, or what level do you you you, sh you should ask them to try first? You know, as, as they go into wine, is there any levels to it? Like, light, but light, medium, bold, red, right, red, white. <laughs> sure. Well, if you are um, the kind of person who likes, you know, and maybe this is along the same lines of why I enjoyed what I enjoyed when I. Yeah. first tried wine um man i loved drinking sweet things i was like i love the sodas you know um if i was yeah. getting a mixed drink i would do rum and coke you yeah, know those classic okay classic okay. classic <laughs> so but now that you know i'm much older i can't <laughs> do the sweet stuff anymore so or at least as much um, so, you know, me now I tend to, if I'm doing a mixed drink, I'll often go for a vodka soda, a gin and tonic. Those are my drinks of choice. Um, I also really like, you know, the spark flavored essence sparkling waters. I really enjoy those. So if, you know, an educated, a wine educated friend was recommending something to me and they knew this, they could be like, okay, well, you clearly like things that are you know, uh, fruity, maybe a little herbaceous, you like sparkling stuff, um, but you, you're not really drinking a lot of stuff with sugar, you know, a lot of sugar. So, hey, let's try this dry sparkling wine. So you can, um, and obviously you don't have to go out and buy the most expensive champagne. <laughs> um, that, yeah. Very if you got it open, you know, mm -hmm. and you want to share it, then that's great. But, um, you know, start, start with stuff. Um, you know, that's at an approachable price range. So you don't feel pressure to like it. Um, and, and, you know, go with kind of, you know, other other um, aspects that you tend to like in other foods and drinks. And you'll probably be right up, uh, starting right where, you know, everyone's comfortable. Got you, got mm -hmm. you. Now, someone like um, sweet drinks, they would look for sweet wines. Maybe yeah. like, like um, the classic uh, rum and coke, vodka, um, vodka and soda, you know, they they want to go somewhere in the dry area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so right. if rum and coke, if, if I had a friend who was a rum and coke drinker, I'd be like, hey, you might like this Riesling or Gewürztraminer. Gewürztraminer, like I said, is often in a sweeter mm -hmm. style and can have those tropical kind of flavors. So, you know, someone who enjoys um, that cocktail, you, you could easily be like, hey, give this a shot. I think you might dig this. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, Missy. I would re I really appreciate it. I hope everyone who watches this video here enjoy that 
um, the basic conversational wise in terms of wine 101 and how to um, go out and, and, and experience and try different wines. And for me, I personally recommend buying a wine that they take it over to your house. And that way you can have your, you know, you can taste it you can taste it and make up your own face so that way no one can see you. I mean, I do sometimes, you know, like when you drink something, you're like, oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes. I love the fact that you point out that you don't have to buy the expensive to, to enjoy something or buy something expensive with the with the mind with the, the, the mindset that it's gonna be great quality or great wine, you know. There are some wines that are in the lower category taste just as good or even mid-range if you want to say, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. So, and I, I think it's, it's also important to note that um, wine is for anyone, you know, um, wine is for anyone and everyone. It just a matter, it just a matter to decide or to know for yourself what kind of wine you like. But again, you will never know what kind of wine you like or what, 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 what kind of wine you can vibe or enjoy or drink if you don't try and experience. Mm -hmm. And that's why I said, I also recommend anyone if you want to drink wine, try wine, try in, in try home first. And it's well, everyone, thank you, thank you guys very much. Uh, if you guys have any questions um, or anything at all, please uh, leave a comment below. I would really appreciate it. And if you guys have any questions for Missy, for Melissa directly, just say Melissa um, colon or whatever or question and Melissa at the end. I'll definitely let her know and have her get back get back to you guys through me. So thank you guys. Until next time, guys. Please drink responsibly and um, enjoy your wine and peace.